<laughs> yeah! Welcome to the Deep End! Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This guide's gonna cover and explain the support in Nami. First up, the basic pretexts. Range 550, main damage orientation is AP, resource, mana. Main role is support. You can't play her mid, but I'm just gonna say support for this guide. Overall skill cap, high. Runes. There are two possible rune setups for Nami. The first is for AP support Nami, as seen below. I get 9 seals of HP for the most amount of raw defensive stats for start game, as Nami is so squishy. I then grab 5 flat glyphs of magic resist and 4 scaling magic resist glyphs. I then grab 9 marks of hybrid penetration and 3 ability power coins for even more damage. This setup gives our heals and generally all round our abilities some nice damage and of course lets our passive scale a little bit better a little quicker. The penetration also works beautifully with our E cast and also just generally speaking when harassing. The second is for AP tank Nami. I get 9 seals of HP. 5 flat glyphs of magic resist and 4 scaling magic resist glyphs. I then get 9 marks of armor for some defensive stats and finally 3 quints of armor. This gives up those defensive stats for those raw defensive stats to stop our squishy Nami from getting popped. If you're kind of hesitant upon playing Nami or you're not very good at her, I do advise this setup. Tank will mean you'll survive and engage unlike the previous one which kind of is unforgiving to any mistakes. Masteries. There are two possible setups for masteries on Nami. I make sure you pick in correlation with the previous rune section. So if you pick AP in the previous rune section, pick AP in this mastery section. Okay, now into it. The first is for AP Utility Nami. 9021 is seen below. This gives us a little cooldown reduction in AP start game to really give Nami some bang for her buck. This is for those Namis who want to burst down their enemies and harass pretty heavily and still get the benefits of the utility tree. The second, also seen below, is for Tank Utility Nami, 0921. This gives us some tankiness, uh, so don't get popped as a squishy Nami. This leaves us very uh, strong start game and kind of not vulnerable at all, really. We also get the Utility Tree for all of its benefits. This is for the less experienced or more careful Namis, as I previously mentioned. The tank stats go a long way in Nami, and I grab this versus a heavy burst spot lane, regardless if you're new or not. Summoner spells. These are the Vival Summoner spells as shown below. They're all pretty self-explanatory on a support. You want to pick up Flash as 100% for a hard getaway or engage. You also then from here want to grab Exhaust for its defensive and offensive properties if you want a very all-round base spell. If you want to kill your enemy laner or they're a heal base slain, you're going to want to pick up Ignite. Besides this, I personally advise Flash Exhaust as it's more all-round, more versatile and generally Nami isn't that much of a kill lane so it's probably better. Compositions to pick Nami with. You should pick Nami to be with these compositions if you see they need these attributes. These are not the only times you pick Nami, of course. You may just have a heavier consideration of her. AoE Compositions. Nami is an amazing support with AoE Compositions. The reason is simple. She has AoE abilities, an AoE stun, AoE knockup. This means she can add to your team's CC potential and completely define the AoE wombo combo. Kiting Compositions. Nami is a good addition to these compositions pretty easily. Her movement speed abilities on her passive, range, stun, sustain, kite, based E and of course complete uh, disengage with her ultimate wraps together to make her perfectly kind of perfect on these compositions. Perfectly perfect, that, that is viable. Her Q setup also helps a lot with poke. Overall, she's very good. AD carries to pick Nami with. Nami does not work with only these AD carries, she works with them all. But the you may just have a heavy consideration of these guys. Lucian. Your bubble sets him up perfectly. More importantly, your auto attack range and ability to harass at greater range than his gives him some room to work, gives him some room to breathe, to make up for his horrible 500 auto attack range. When he dashes, he gets in range for your W bounces very easily. The last and most important point is the fact that your E, double shot, works with his passive. It works with the double shot, so you get two shots of the E immediately. And hence, just kind of gives him general huge burst spikes of damage. With Lucian, I actually level my E first, so we can early in for the unexpected and insane double shot E damage. Graves. Your bubble is the perfect setup for this guy's entire kit. Your auto attack range also gives him breathing room versus poke lanes, and your sustain also helps with kind of any engage to keep him healthy. A quick uh, QWE combo with Graves basically leaves anyone dead. Lastly, when he jumps into his enemy, your bubble can bounce off him as he gets him into range perfectly, and you make up for his low range with your greater range. 
Vein. Her weak start game is covered by Nami's pretty decent one. Nami's heal and CC can allow Vein to get through the laning phase decently well. And when it gets to mid game, her chase potential on Nami's passive makes her a joke, and her general defense. Ezreal, this guy hasn't got the strongest laning phase, not weak, just not strong. This gives Nami sustain and harassing abilities, bringing the lane up to a strong standing. Ezreal's Q proc works on your E, giving him a massive increase to his overall burst, generally speaking. Normally getting hit by an Ezreal Q is something you want to avoid, with an Nami's E on top of it, it kind of hurts. Nami's Q can also set up Ezreal's kind of entire kit when they get stuck in place. Varus. This guy's burst match with your burst and CC setup makes him a very powerful lane. Your sustain and poke together make this lane very harassment based and not many lanes can simply keep up with this long range harassment ever. Corky. Much like Varus, Nami's CC setup kind of set up Corky's kit. Her sustain and burst works with Corky's and it, overall it makes it a very powerful kill lane. AD carries to pick Nami versus. Nami does not counter these lanes completely, she can still lose, she just has a higher chance to win versus these lanes. Ash. She is heavily immobile, you can take advantage of this by simply making it easy to land your Q and ultimate. In the laning phase you can harass her down pretty heavily and outtrade her with your heals very simply. She can't really retaliate in any way. Kog'Maw, exactly the same as Ash. He can't deal with your start game harassment and he's immobile so he can't avoid any of your abilities and your heal out heals him and your damage usually out damages him until later on into the game. Overall, just take advantage of the weak start game carries and you should be fine on Nami. Supports to pick versus. These matchups depend on your AD carry, your skill level, your enemy skill level, jungle ganks, roams, etc. These are just supports that you will crap on for the most part, but of course you can still theoretically lose, so do be careful. Janna. She has a very passive laning phase, this means Nami can take advantage of this with her more aggressive base kit. Nami can harass Janna and she simply can't deal with it very well. Nami also has more CC and sustain than Janna, meaning you should win the lane pretty easily. At level 6, Nami counters Janna's ultimate hard time. When, An when Janna ultimates, start channeling your ultimate and knock her up while she's trying to heal and it'll knock them all off while they're trying to escape, completely counting her disengage. Oh, and your passive nullifies her passive while it's on. Thresh. You can easily outpoke this guy and outsustain him very easily. If he lands a Q, aim your Q, when he, when he grabs the Q and pulls himself in, shoot the Q to where he will land, and this will destroy his uh, QE combo. Placing him in the spot screwed, from here trade him, and make sure he runs back, losing a lot of health. From here throw a heal on your carry and it will bounce off him to the Thresh and back down to you, giving you free health and damage for the trade. Braum. This guy is weak to harassment and has kind of got low range, which is a causality of it. Nami can auto attack, double E and E him down and there's pretty much nothing he can do. The low cooldown on Nami's abilities means Braum can't really block even half of them even if he wanted to. It's easy to beat out his E with your E, auto attacks or W. Braum should easily be harassed down. When you W him it will bounce back regardless if his shield is up or not and still heal you. Remember just to be careful not to ultimate when he shields and you should be fine. Tarek. The amount of free harassment you can put down in this guy is outrageous. Truly, truly outrageous. He can't outheal your damage and he can't counter engage either, uh, so generally you should win. Support Fiddle 6. Support Fiddle relies on harassing. You can heal this, draining with his W channel. You can cancel this with your Q. Oh, and at level 6 relies on channeling his ultimate. You can cancel this with your Q or ultimate. So overall, you kind of counter his entire kit pretty much. Uh, and if he pulls off his ultimate, you can use your ultimate and your passive to get all your team away. Soraka. Most of Soraka's abilities are kind of placement based, and especially that silence. This makes it easy to avoid or counter the abilities to some degree if you use Nami's passive. Soraka is also very squishy and very susceptible to CC and harassment. This can lead to her being easily killed. Soraka's sustain is more powerful than Nami's, but Nami can keep up to a similar degree, making Soraka sustain less of a factor compared to most other supports. Supports to avoid, you can still win, it's just less likely. Leona. This is a dangerous lane, Leona's all in potential will wreck you. When she all in, she can't kill her, you can't stop her diving and you can't really stop doing anything. So just to avoid this lane pretty much at all costs, she can just engage and kill you and there's nothing you can do about it. Blitzcrank. The same as Leona, uh, once he grabs you, you're done for. You can't stop him from engaging when he grabs you, and damn he's squishy, so you get popped. Morgana. She can spell shield pretty much all of your kit, especially that 
Q, which is telegraphed very heavily, and she should have a relatively easy time shielding all of your kit. Lulu, she actually provides a lot of damage more than Nami. She can keep up and keep you poked down all game, and your sustain simply can't keep up with her pressure if she's careful. Sona, same as Lulu, her start game prowess and damage is a little more than Nami can deal with. Her sustain can't keep up with Sona's harass, and a good Sona can simply sustain on the same level as Nami, which nullifies the sustained game. The only chance Nami has is a hard, hard engage, which is landing that Q perfectly and getting the Sona out of position, but that's a situational and can always happen. Leveling order, there is only really one main leveling order that is shown below. Start with your Q for the start game stun and setup potential, this will also help your jungler if they need some help to start game. From here, grab your W for the damage and of course sustain if your lane kind of needs it. From here, either level your E at level 3 or 4, generally I leave it to level 3 for the more all lane potential. From here we max our W for its massive sustain and damage it provides. This maximises our laning phase so we max the W first. After this we max our E, not our Q, the reason is simple. When we put points in our E it increases the slow damage and of course cooldown and damage. Uh, when we level it up and we put points in our Q we only get a cooldown and some increased damage but no increase to the stun so we keep we don't put points in the Q as the base stun gives us all we want at the first level anyway. This for me is not worth it. Uh, the cooldown on a Q isn't worth putting points into it. I'd much rather the kiting capability and damage capability of using my E percentage slow with each level maxing on my E. As always get your ultimate anytime you can. I'll see you below. Support item. There are two main support items you can get on Nami. Both are already equally viable and I'll explain them both now. Coin. Nami actually works with coin if you're going full utility and planning for a very passive laning phase. The coin is when you're versus a lane you're scared of, so for example you're versus a Leona, you just want to sit back, you don't want to risk poking, so get coin. The active also works amazingly with your ultimate and of course your passive, giving you the ability to run or chase an enemy with ease. Spell Thieves. This is a more popular item for Nami, the AP provides your whole kit with more damage and of course gives that heal a slightly better one. Due to Nami's range and all of her abilities and auto attack range, she can proc spell thieves with relative ease. The active can also make you and help you land your Q and general kit. And the lockdown just helps you escape and overall just makes Nami even better at kiting or chasing down an enemy. Nami's passive, Surging Tides. When Nami hits an allied champion they gain 40 plus 10% AP bonus movement speed for 1.5 seconds. Uses and tips. Number 1. Surging Tides will apply when an allied champion is targeted by Ebb and Flow or Tide Caller's Blessing, or when they're in the impact area of Aqua Prison or Tidal Wave. In other words, all of your abilities provide this passive on hit, so use this on all of your abilities when your allies need some movement speed. Number 2. Ensure you utilize this buff to its maximum extent. Don't spam all of your abilities in one go immediately on an ally as it wastes a large amount of potential and possible movement speed time. Remember the buff refreshes on each ability landed. Spread out your cast between 1.5 seconds to ensure you refresh the buff only when it's about to be over, to maximize the movement speed you gain from this ability. This is a massive problem many uh, Nami players make, uh, they just think they forget about it passively in the moment, but it is very important. The movement speed of this ability is epic, so use it to its maximum potential. Number 3, a basic use of this ability is to help kite an enemy ever. Don't be afraid to use multiple abilities to ensure you can kite to your maximum extent. Number 4, kind of coming on from the previous point, you can use this ability to help any of your allies escaping. Number 5, the movement speed with this passive may also be used to chase down any enemy. No one ever gets away from a good Nami. Number 6, a pretty awesome use of Surging Tides is to get your allies or yourself to get to lean faster. A double use of your abilities can help you get to lean a lot faster. To make this even more effective, run right beside your allies so you can hit yourself and your ally with your Q if you clump together giving you both the movement speed for example. This goes for getting anyone back to base, even if you're walking to lane uh, and someone, say the jungler's passing you, cast your E on them, get them back to lane faster. Number 7, due to this passive always try and use your ultimate behind your team so they can get the movement speed and of course so it also hits the enemy team as well. This goes for your Q also but mainly your ultimate. Because you don't want to use your ultimate in front of your team and no one will get the passive. You might as well use it behind your team, everyone gets the movement speed and it hits the enemy team as well. Number 8, use this movement speed to make mobilities or home guards a joke when travelling around or getting around. 
These items are very notable with this ability. Number 9, Surging Tides is amazing to help you and your allies in avoiding skill shots pretty much all game. This is actually a point not many people mention. The movement speed can be helped massively and more than most people expect to kind of escape most skill shots. So if a Blitzcrank's chasing you, you use an ability on someone and they get that burst of movement speed to avoid the skill shot. Number 10, if you see your teammate needs to escape or is chasing down an enemy, you can either use Ebb and Flow or Tide Caller's Blessing to quickly activate your passive, Surging Tides, increasing your allies movement speed. In other words, uh, your W and E are the fastest way to give someone your passive, so overall you should generally use it with those. Number 11, coming on from the previous point which I just mentioned, casting Tide Caller's Blessing is usually a better option than Ebb and Flow because it consumes less mana and is an instant cast. Ebb and Flow may heal you and your allies but it requires a very short channel time and of course travel time, which could allow your chaser to catch up if you just cast an E. In other words, use your E if you ever want a quick movement speed burst. After this use your W, after this use your Q and after this use your ultimate. Nami's Q, Aqua Prison, active. Nami sends a bubble into the air towards a targeted area. When it lands, it deals magical damage to all enemies in the area of impact and suspends them for 1.5 seconds. Ability range, 875. Uses and tips. Number one, spell shields will block this ability. Number two, this ability is considered to be a projectile for unbreakable and wind wall. Number three, Aqua Prison acts as a knockup for the purpose of Yasuo's last breath. This ability is actually classified as only a stun. It is not a knockup, but is specially coded to work with only Yasuo for its purposes. Number four, the AOE has a radius of 162. Number five, this is the most important point. It seems to take 0.875 seconds from cast to land. There is a wind up before the bubble is launched regardless of the distance. So in other words, it takes 0.87 seconds regardless if you cast it beside yourself or far away. This is mind boggling and it is mainly the only reason why most people have so much trouble playing Nami and can't land any cues. The travel distance is the same from a short to a long cast. Most other skill shots in the game never have this uh, and they're just, they're linear, you shoot them and there's a travel time and that's it. You know, most people can calculate that, but they can't calculate a base time regardless of distance. So timing your bubble is a precision task rather than a normal skill shot with a normal travel time based off distance to target. This means you have to practice your cue a lot. When I say a, lot, say a lot, I mean so much you get carpal tunnel syndrome. This is the key reason and the key way to becoming a good Nami. Uh, getting down landing your Q. This is the biggest point I can say about this ability. It has a static travel time. Number six, this ability can be used to cancel channel based abilities. It's a good stun, so it's always good to stop those channels. Just remember it has a travel time. Number seven, this ability, like with all of your abilities, applies your passive. Remember, you can cast it on your allies to give them free movement speed as well as a pure offensive stun. Number eight, a very basic but important use of your Q is to apply this to set up a fight at pretty much any point in the game. This mostly applies to bot lane to set up your carry, but still, this is basically Nami's only good way and hard, sure set way of starting a fight. Number nine, Aqua Prison is amazing and awesome to help you and your team in kiting. This works in two possible ways, the movement speed if cast on an ally, and of course the CC which when cast on an enemy will stun them, both work. Number 10, can be used to escape from your enemies, both the CC if on an enemy and the movement speed if cast on yourself or an ally to help with the movement speed. Number 11, same as before you can use this ability to chase down an enemy, the CC and movement speed if cast on your allies can be used to achieve this feat. Number 12, Aqua Prison is an amazing peel tool. When a bruiser is on your carry, ensure you hit the bruiser and your ally to ensure the movement speed is given to your ally and the bruiser is stunned. Number 13, your Q is a static travel time. This is the, one of the main reasons why people can't play even a mediocre Nami. To fix this problem, always attempt to use your E uh, to set up your Q. The movement speed slow will make landing your Q a lot easier. Number 14, generally try and set up your Q with any other CC in any way, shape or form. Always try and land this ability with another person's CC or hell even spell thieves, basically anything. Try to use this ability with other people's CC. Number 15, Aqua Prison is epic to set up a gank. The stun can easily give your jungler enough time to get into position. Number 16, coming on from the previous point, this ability is also awesome to fight off a gank with a ranged stun. 
Number 17, for the most part, any time you can use your double E, it'll be around 50% of the time used when your enemy is suspended in air in conjunction with your Q, giving you plenty of free and more importantly safe time to use your double E to its maximum extent, ensuring you get multiple bounces. In other words, use your double E when your enemy's queued uh, so you can get damage while being safe. Number 18, the mere threat of this ability is phenomenal to zone an enemy in the laning phase. People do not want to be hit by this ability and will avoid it at all costs. If you really want a hardcore ham, uh, zone someone, throw your bubble before they go for a cannon creep and uh, people will back off immediately, uh, missing the creep and of course being zoned. Number 19, the base damage of this ability isn't actually too bad at pushing minion waves. Generally I cast this in the clumped caster backline to maximise my damage. Number 20, the stun of this ability is also amazing to hold minion waves a little bit. If you walk into the minion wave and clump them, uh, you can use your stun uh, to stop them just even for a single second and this will stop the minion wave from advancing for kind of a long time because they'll be clumped as well, saving your carry some precious CS. Number 21, Acro Prison is a neat ability to make a pick at any point in the game. This ability is a pretty heavy stun so if you see someone say trying to poke your team and coming up a little too close to you, use this ability to make a pick onto them so your team can follow up and kill them. Number 22, if someone is out of position to a moderate extent you can use this ability to start a team fight. This is actually harder to pull off than you think but it can work. Number 23, not a cool little tactic. You can use this ability to face check a bush in a weird way. If you have Spell Thief's Edge and fire your Q into a bush and someone is there, you'll get a 5 gold pop up saying you hit them, because you procced Spell Thieves because you hit an enemy. This isn't a 100% face check as the ability's range is small and you need Spell Thieves, uh, but if you want to check a small bush desperately it can still work. Overall I always try and give these guys stuff that's out of the box, you know, this could help uh, that one player and that's what I'm looking for. Nami's W, Ebb and Flow, active. Nami unleashes a stream of water that bounces between allied and enemy champions. This ability can only bounce to each target once and hits up to 3 targets. The damage and heal are modified by minus 15% plus 7.5 per 100 AP with each bounce. On allied hits, Ebb and Flow heals a target and bounces towards an enemy champion. On enemy hit, the torrent deals magical damage and bounces towards a nearby allied champion. Ability range 725, uses and tips. Number 1, Spell Shields will block one bounce of this ability, Ebb and Flow will continue to bounce and the target who blocked the ability may be targeted again by a later bounce. Number 2, this ability is considered to be a projectile for Unbreakable and Windwall. Number 3, additional ability power will be modified and the damage slash healing of Ebb and Flow by a percentage based off the number of bounces. Number 4, Ebb and Flow bounces between allied and enemy champions and doesn't hit the same target twice, depending on which side you hit the ability on. Number 5, the bounce range of Ebb and Flow is larger than the cast range, so sometimes casting Ebb and Flow on yourself can achieve a longer range than casting Ebb and Flow straight on an enemy. This is a pretty awesome trick when your enemy thinks they're safe and this is a next level only good Nami trick. Number 6, if cast on an allied champion the spell will hit as follows. Ally, enemy, ally. If cast on an enemy champion, the spell will hit as follows. Enemy, ally, enemy. If there is no appropriate unit for the middle bounce effect, or uh, such as no enemy unit is around, uh, then it will go ally, enemy, ally bounce. Only the initial cast will occur. You may want to go back to this point again to ensure you understand how the bounce works. It pretty much means it'll hit. if it hits an ally, it will hit two allies. If it hits an enemy, it will hit two enemies. Number 7, basically with the bounces ensure you have 3 individual targets that are within castable range to ensure it bounces 3 times. This ability isn't that hard to pull off contrary to popular belief in my opinion. It's all about firing into clumped enemies to ensure you get the full bounces. If people are within range it will bounce, simple. Number 8, overall do ensure that this ability gets at least a single bounce back, you know, uh, to ensure it's worth its mana. A single bounce is a massively inefficient way of utilising this ability. I personally believe if you don't get two bounces you wasted the ability. Number 9, a final point in this ability, once this bounce is coming back to you after you've cast it for example, on a single target for basic harass, just run away. The bounce will follow you, you don't have to stand in range once the heal is travelling towards you. I see many Nami sitting in one spot waiting for the heal to hit them before going back, this isn't required. Number 10, you can use this ability to harass your enemy while healing yourself. Run at them and cast the ability onto them. Once it hits off them, it'll bounce back to you, and once it starts travelling towards you and has chosen you as a target, start to run. 
Number 11, this ability is best utilised on aggressive dash based champions like Graves and Lucian for example. The reasoning behind this is the fact that they jump into their enemy's face. So if you wait until they jump into their face, cast it on Graves for example, it will bounce off the Graves as he got into range for you and will allow your lane to get even more burst. They get you into range for free, get you into bounce range for free. Hence the reason they're so good with uh, Nami and they're in the good eddy carry with section. Number 12 can be used to help you and your carries win trades. I generally heal my ally during trades so I can max heal onto my ally and then secondary the, the second weak bounce onto my enemy I kind of prioritize healing over damage. Number 13 coming on from the previous point and overall with this ability I personally prioritize my heal bounce before my carry. Remember the bounces the more bounces this ability does the weaker the heal after each bounce. Basically, all bad to even moderate Nami players can cast this ability on their enemy to get the secondary heal bounce back for themselves. During a fight, I give my first bounce to my carry as I'm a support. Uh, the logic of this is I deal decent damage as a support, but the lion's share of the damage is coming from my carry's sustained damage. So I want my actual, uh, like my actual power, my actual gun, literally, I want them as healthy as possible to remain as a damage source. The second bounce will still deal a little damage to help the enemy carry. I like this, I like healing my carry first to give them the full heal rather than the full damage to my enemy. Uh, rather than damaging my enemy a little bit more and giving a lackluster heal, I'd rather do some real healing and then do lackluster damage. Because the real source of damage is the Eddie carry. This is just something to think about. Uh, do use this ability to deal decent damage for more burst and if you want to do damage and burst down your enemy, cast it on your enemy. Or if you want to keep your carry healthy for an extended trade, heal your carry. Cast it on him. So it's up to you. Do you get two heals or two damaging procs? Which is worth more to you? Sorry, this is a very drawn out point. I'm just trying to logically apply it. Number 14, the heal associated with this ability can be used to stall minion waves. You can take a little damage by simply tanking the wave for a few seconds then finally of course healing yourself and backing off the minion wave. This can stall them for a few seconds saving those few precious minions from reaching the turret. Your carry will thank you. Number 15, overall when you use this ability use it to generally sustain up. This makes Nami a slight sustain lane overall. Uh, use this anytime your carry is low to sustain them up overall. Simple but a very common usage. Always sustain everyone up constantly. Number 16, Emin Flow also applies that passive, which can help you escape, chase, avoid skill shots, and then the other points I mentioned in the passive section. Just a reminder. Number 17, once again, the sheer threat of you getting a bounce onto your enemy can be used to help zone them and just generally mess them up in the laning phase. Number 18, can be used to proc spell thief edge marks. Cast this ability on your enemy, it will bounce back to you and then back to another enemy, assuming they're close enough and it'll get you two procs of spell thieves. Number 19, you can use your bounces and abuse them very heavily. If your enemy is far away and your enemy carries a little closer, you can use your carry as a sort of bridge for your damage. So if you cast it on the carry, it'll bounce off the carry to them. This can unexpectedly hit people that never thought they were th where they were within range, and you can abuse the bounce range pretty badly if you get the hang of it. You can sit back, fire it on yourself, your ally, to your enemy, and you know that's a lot of bounces. It's kind of a next level kind of Nami tactic, staying back and chaining bounces to remain safe, but overall very effective. Number 20, a note to this ability over all of the others, it's very expense, expensive mana wise so do be very careful and don't spam it too often. Nami's E, Tidecaller's Blessing, active. Nami empowers an allied champion for 6 seconds or until they have attacked 3 times. During this time their basic attacks deal bonus magical damage and slow the target hit for 1 second. Castable range 800. Movement speed slow 15, 20, 25, 30, 35% plus 5% 5 per 100 AP. Uses and tips. Number one, spell shields will have no effect on Tide Caller's blessing. Number two, the damage dealt is based off Nami's own ability part at the time of cast and the buff target's magic penetration. Number three, Tide Caller's blessing has no cast time and does not interrupt Nami's previous orders. Number four, Tide Caller's blessing bonus damage will not trigger either on hit effects or spell effects. Number five, both effects of Tide Caller's blessing will be wasted if an attack is dodged, blocked, or parried, or if the attack misses. Number 6, a little known trick is if you cast your E on yourself, 
in the middle of an auto attack, the slow effect is still proc'd even if the auto attack is in the middle of air and the middle between your target and your cast. This can save you from potentially wasting your E, wait until you actually start auto attacking and then cast it to ensure it's not wasted and of course to surprise slow an enemy. Number 7, this can also work with champions that are using on hit builds like Teemo or uh, Gangplank Q for example, it works with on hit. Number 8, this ability can help with general auto attack harassment for either yourself auto attacking or of course your carry. Number 9, the movement speed slow with this ability makes it awesome to help yourself or one of your team in kiting an enemy. This especially works with those carries who have trouble kiting like Kog'Maw. Number 10, when chasing an enemy, Tide Colors Blessing helps in two ways. It applies your passive, giving whomever you cast it upon free movement speed. And of course, if they get within auto attack range, you also get the movement speed slow. The yin yang of the movement speed world. Number 11, if you cast this on yourself, you can auto attack the front of the minion wave to slow the minion waves in pushing and reaching your turret, potentially saving your carry some gold. So stall the minion waves with slows to your heart's content. Number 12, as Nami's absolute garbage at CSing normally, if you apply this to yourself while your carry is away, this can help you last hit minions. I mean, you might as well get the minions with your E, or you know, you don't want to risk missing them with just a normal, normal auto attack. Number 13, kind of coming on from the previous point, apply this to your ready carry so they may help push minion waves slightly faster. Number 14, a cool tip you can also run is applying this to your carry while they're last hitting under turret. This can help your carry have an easy time compared to the normal soul retching, utterly tormenting uh, feelings associated when CSing under a turret normally. Number 15, mentioned in the Q section, I just want to reiterate so it's, as it's that important, always try and use your E to set up your Q. Remember uh, that your Q's travel time is horrible, static and is easily juked. If you slow your enemy, it makes it a lot easier to land your Q. Number 16, Tide Colors Blessing works great with skill shot based champions like Corky and Ezreal. Due to the movement speed slow applied, this can make it extremely easy for skill shot based champions to actually land those skill shots. A slowed enemy is easier to hit than a non slowed one. Number 17, if trying to activate your passive in a rush, always use your E before any other ability. Remember your E is an instant cast with no travel time, hence it activates your passive immediately and will give you quick movement speed immediately. I said immediately like 4 times, 5, no. Four? I don't know. <laughs> Number 18, remember to cast this on a champion who actually auto attacks. Generally you should not be casting this on a caster based mid laner for example as they rarely auto attack, hence barely use your E. Give it to someone who actually auto attacks so they, you know, use it. <laughs> Number 19, now a pretty big point, once mid and late game hits you should nearly always use this ability on yourself. The reason for this is auto attack speed. Once mid and late game hits your ready carrier marksman's auto attack speed will make the slow of this ability overlap, hence making it massively inefficient. So mid uh, game cast this on yourself uh, with your lower auto attack speed so your auto attacks interchange and get the full slow between auto attacks to ensure this ability is used to its maximum potential and not refresh so quickly that it, w it is wasted like with an eddy carry. Number 20, now a little issue, if your eddy carry kills with the base E auto attack you can potentially steal the kill, this is so rare but I've seen it happen, uh, if a kill is secured just leave it. Nami's R slash ultimate, tidal wave, active. Nami summons a tidal wave that moves outward in a broad line and deals magical damage it comes in contact with briefly knocking them up and slowing them down. The slow duration increases based upon how far Tidal Wave has travelled, with a minimum duration of 2 seconds and a maximum duration of 4 seconds. Ability range, 2750, movement speed slow, 50, 60 and 70%. Uses and tips. Number 1, spell shields will block this ability. Number 2, Nami's passive will trigger immediately on herself when this ability is cast. Number 3, there is a brief channel time during which Nami performs the animation. It can only be interrupted by death, in which case the ability will not trigger and will not go on cooldown. This is a pretty big point, you cannot cancel the channel of this ability. Number 4, the wave travels for 3.2 seconds at a speed of 859 roughly, with a missile width of 562 making it undodgeable by foot at 325 movement speed at a range of 742. Number 5, this ability is considered to be a displacement for the sake of Yasuo's ultimate and works very well with it might I add. You can surf its waves of success. Number 6, the basic bread and butter use of this ability is to use it to engage team fights. Due to the low travel speed I would only do this if an enemy is CC'd or if they're kind of close and too close to juke it really. 
Number seven, coming on from the previous point, the uncounterability of this ability, I'm not recommending it using it as an engage tool all the time, but rather in the middle of a team fight as a means of peeling and counter engaging. The reason is simple, once a team fight starts, people will be in the middle of the team, on your carries, they don't have time to move aside and will be concentrating on a hundred different things, only one of which will be your ultimate. I actually only use this to engage if I'm kind of desperate or if I'm in a tight corridor, or if they're sort of close. But overall, generally, use it in the middle of a team fight uh, to kind of peel, CC everyone uh, when they can't actually move out or counter this ability at all. Number 8, this ability is great to help catch fleeing enemies, cast this behind your allies giving them movement speed and of course giving you a chance to knock your enemies up with the actual ability. Number 9, if possible, aim it at small tight choke points where enemies can't sidestep it. Your ultimate is kind of easily avoided besides this so if you use it in t for example tight corridors in the jungles or the exits near dragon and baron leading towards the buffs it's really hard to avoid this ability. Generally, just try and not use it in open planes and you have a better advantage. Number 10, you can use Tidal Wave in conjunction with your Aqua Prison to chain stun an enemy pretty heavily. This is your only chance to ever chain stun someone, so I do advise it. If you get a key target like the Eddie Carry with Aqua Prison, you might as well chain stun them up. Number 11, the knockup associated with this ability can interrupt channel based abilities. The travel time makes it a little slow and a little inefficient when doing this task, but it can still happen and is effective if you just use your Q for example. Number 12, the displacement of this ability can also interrupt dash based abilities. Although this is hard to pull off due to the casting animation and of course travel time, but it is well worth your time if someone's diving towards your backline with a dash, cancelling it with your ultimate. This is a pretty big point. You can peel, stop, uh, execute dashes, anything. Very good point. Number 13, always try and use this ability at close, at close proximities overall. The reason is simple, this ability is actually quite a slow travel time and can simply be walked around. I've seen many Namis trying to you know, go for the Hail Mary of all ranged engages and it's just not working. It usually doesn't work and basically in all cases they'll just walk around it or to the side of it. Keep it safe and try to use it at closer ranges if you ever can. Number 14, this ability is good at disengaging teamfights, the reason is simple, your enemies will see it coming, move around it, wasting time trying to catch up, or it'll hit them and slow them down, knock them up and you're getting away, both of which are good disengage. Number 15, this ability counters disengages, so if your team attempts to start a teamfight, uh, and for example a Janna uses her ultimate to knock you all back, your ultimate can re-engage giving your whole team the movement speed and of course knocking the enemy team up. This helps a lot versus disengages, uh, I mentioned this earlier but I wanted to explain it more. The, the, the whole movement speed behind this ability, like most champions can't really re-engage after a disengage has happened, Nambi is one of the few champions that is actually good at this. Number 16, the last point I wanted to reiterate, always try and use this ability from behind your team so they get the movement speed once the wave goes over them, you know? Uh, try to avoid using it, you know, at the front of your team because no one will get your passive, like no one at all and well, besides yourself, but and it's just less effective. Always try and do it behind your team, just a last point. Combo Pretext Nami's combos are pretty much the most important thing about her to obtain lane control and to assist her carry to the maximum potential. A note for these combos is that they're here for the most part to set up your carry or your team, not yourself. You are a support at the end of the day. Apply these combos to the team or bot lane scenario and generally not, like Nami isn't going to go around to do these combos by herself, they are with the team. Of course Nami can still do decent damage but to maximise uh, support Nami you really have to use them in conjunction with their team. A note for this section is that uh, Nami's passive icon will symbolise Nami's auto attacks to the left hand side. Zone Combos Zone Combo number 1, Q and W Threat. The standard threat of using your Q or W or help even using them together is easily enough to zone out most enemies. This is mainly what you'll be doing during the laning phase, pretending you're about to use these abilities and just zoning people and keeping pressure up on the lane. Zone combo number 2, E, yourself or your carry. If you cast E on yourself or your carry, people back off pretty heavily. They know that extra magic damage and slow on the auto attacks really can hurt them so they're going to get zoned from it. This is more a hard zone tool. Harass combos. Harass combo number one, auto attack. Nami's auto attack range is 550. This means she can auto attack, harass her enemies pretty heavily throughout the laning phase. You should be using auto attacks to harass pretty often. This is one of the most common things you will be doing, especially start game at levels one to three. Harass combo number two, E, yourself or your carry and auto attack. 
Coming on from the previous point, our auto attacks are awesome to harass. If we add in our E, now we have an auto attack party, of course, your enemies are invited too. This again should be a very common combo. Harass combo number 3, W. A good form of harassment is using your W at your enemy so it bounces off them and heals you, or doubling your carry when they're close enough, it'll bounce off your carry, healing them and hit the enemy. Whatever way you do it, it does decent damage and it works. Harass combo number 4, Q, auto attack. We start this harass by landing our Q. If it landed, we, it does decent damage and stuns our opponent. While they're suspended in air, absolutely uh, free, you can just run up, auto attack, and this does it with relative safety and then run away after this. Remember, we are only harassing. Harass combo number five, Q, W. The more standard combo is landing your Q, running up to your enemy, and using your W, bounce damage off them to get the heal on yourself with absolute safety, and of course adding a little bit of burst aspect to Anami, which you kind of lack sometimes. Trade combos. <coughs> oh god, how do people do that voice? Trade combo number one, E yourself or your carry and auto attack. Early game a good trade is Eing yourself or your carry and then auto attack harassing your enemy to ensure you win the trade the best you can with the extra damage and slow. Trade combo number 2, auto attack, Q, auto attack. A trade means a decently long engage over a few seconds. We start with our auto attack, uh, lead it on with the Q and after this auto attack while they're stunned. The Q acts as a very soft auto attack reset as well, kinda. Trade combo number 4, auto attack, W. Run up and auto attack your enemy while they turn to trade you W them to deal the damage and get the heal points back off them. Trade combo number 4, auto attack, Q, W. We start with an auto attack, Q them, and then W the while they're stunned to get the heal and then back off. All in combos. 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 <laughs> A note to these combos is it's actually very important to auto attack after they're done. And all in means it's to life or death. Too many people stop auto attacking, stop moving, stop doing anything of use. Please auto attack after they've been complete. And all in, as I've mentioned, is life or death. You provide a lot of damage with auto attacks, start game especially, so please use them. One man, one. All in combo. All in combo number one. Auto attack, Q, auto attack. Begin with your auto attack and then cancel the complete animation by using your Q for a soft auto attack reset. From here, while they're suspended in air, keep auto attacking. Very early combo. All in combo number 2. Auto attack, Q, W, auto attack. Begin with an auto attack and then Q lock down your enemy. After this, W while they're in the air to get the good points off and then just keep auto attacking and hope. All in combo number 3. E yourself or your carry. Auto attack, Q, auto attack, W. Start by activating your E, then auto attacking your enemy. Once they're slowed, you can use this to set up a landed Q very easily. After this, auto attack and double your enemy, ensuring you get at least two bounces, and that's pretty much it. All in combo number four R, Q, W, E, yourself or your carry, auto attack. For a heavy distance engage, use your ultimate to engage your enemy, and while they're in air and knocked up, use your Q to make it easily landed. After this, run up and W your carry to ensure they are close enough to get at least two bounces. After this, E yourself uh, to keep on kiting if you're losing, or of course E your carry if you're chasing and they've usually got a longer range. Laning section, lane type, kill, poke, sustain, playstyle, aggressive, sustain, zone, everything actually. Nami is extremely versatile, she can be played a multitude of ways and essentially any playstyle that has been invented for the bot lane and bot lane theory she pretty much fills, so overall she can be played anyway. I'm not going to give an exact way, I was going to and then I kind of thought about it. Generally, I play her quite versatile. If I have a kill AD carry with me, I play kill. If I have a poke AD carry, I play a poke. If uh, we're trading out a lot, I sustain lots. She's pretty much everything. She's got everything. Now his landing phase is mainly about auto attacking, Q and Wing, harass your enemy while waiting for an aggressive engage lockdown and of course just trying to land that Q the whole time. Your main focus should be on zoning and locking down your enemies anytime you can, giving your carry openings to engage or simply uh, just sitting back and zoning and just sustaining out. Nami's whole laning phase is just about putting pressure down with the most of her abilities, making small trades and bang once an enemy's out of position using her Q and giving her carry an opening. That is pretty much her laning phase. So overall auto attack poke and zone, wait for an engagement if they get out of position use your Q to lock them down and then hey presto you've got a Nami lane. If you're losing badly, simply stall the lane and keep sustaining with your W and try and keep your enemy in check and wait for a gank or until you get to level 6 so you can chain lock them. 
If ahead, you can actually engage with your abilities. Remember to use that passive to get into range if your enemies are keeping very far back. Overall, just use your abilities, lock them down, and engage. You should win. And that's pretty much it for the laning phase. I'm sorry it's so basic, but it is very standard for any uh, aggressive caster support. A note and interjection to this is I am going to make a support guide very soon. Support is one of my main roles, if not my main role right now. Uh, and I have a, a huge guide for it, but I'm going to try and, of course, jazz it up recently. I've done the other guides very slow, so I'm going to try and speed this one up. But anyway, that's for the future. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Team fight section. Your role in team fights comes in two potential possible forms: engage or defend. You have to make your choice depending on what your team needs you to do: engage or defend. Think: Do you need someone to CC the backline as no one in your team really can get there, or is your backline dying a lot and you already have an engage? In this case, you'll defend. I'll cover this in two sections: one for defending in team fights and one for engaging. Nami is professional at both tasks and even mixing them if that is what's required. Engage team fight. This is a simple team fight tactic. You must go to the front line of your team and try and land an ultimate into the enemy team, getting close as you can. Once your team's locked up, use your Q in the most precious target you can possibly uh, get your slimy hands on. After this, back off, E one of your frontliners so they can auto attack slow your enemy and uh, heal anyone that kind of uh, is keep on getting chased. Usually the frontliner as they lose health first. And then after this, back off chill out and then go to your backline immediately. Even after engaging, Nami should still go back to your backline. Um, she can be used to engage but do go back after it. She's not a frontliner, she's not durable enough to be there really. Defend teamfight. Sit exactly in the middle of your carries ready for anything. You're a backliner. If a diver comes, use your E on an ally that is being chased uh, to give them of course the passive and allows them to kite for themselves. From here, if the diver keeps on coming uh, to get your ally, heal them. Uh, once they've took some damage, don't heal without anything. They get the movement speed and some HP. After this, if uh, once they're too deep, use your Q to peel for them, uh, giving your carry a lot of breathing room on whoever's get uh, who's get, ever getting dived. If multiple divers come along, use your ultimate to lock them all down. Don't try to use your Q to lock down multiple divers. It's an inefficient tactic, and people will just you know um, like you might hit one of them with the Q, but you're not going to hit them all. It's not feasible. So. Uh, just sit back, use your uh, abilities defensively, don't stack the passive too much, make sure you use the full refresh duration, and that's pretty much it. Kind of simple. Both. If my team is losing, I use my passive to speed up as many people as I can to get them the hell out of there. If my ulti's still up, I use my Q to stop any enemies from advancing. Uh, always heal your lowest HP ally and apply your E even to anyone you can. Just get the people that are the furthest back your passive, so use your abilities in them to get them out of there. And that's pretty much your only job. If your ultimate's still up uh, before a team fight started, use that to get away. If my team's winning, I use my passive in conjunction with all of my abilities, and more importantly, my Q to catch up with any enemies. This is a pretty big thing. Just chain lock the, the abilities, give your fastest champion the movement speed, and they'll chase down and kill pretty much anyone they can. And that's pretty much it. And not only is that it for the section, that's it for the guide. I hope it helped guys, remember to like it if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, sub if you think that it's good quality and content, or unsub if the video didn't meet up to your expectations and you previously did sub. You can also share if you think it's good enough or know that anyone that would benefit from some NAMI tips at all. Or put it online and uh, you can even uh, you can put this up and take the piss out of me. I give everyone permission to use any of my things in any, any way, shape or form they can even think of. You can even take the piss out of me. Uh, one guy made a video of all the times I go, uh, and it's quite funny. You know, he, he privately sent me it. He can put it up though. Um, over. Besides that, guys, I've tried to do a little thing with my uh, voices the way I normally talk, my normal speed, normal pace. I'm quite a fast-paced fellow uh, from Northern Ireland so we generally do that we're quite fast uh, if this is okay I've tried to speed up the guys because a lot of people are, are uh, saying they're a bit long and I, I can see their point they are so uh, if you don't mind me speaking at this pace for a faster guide and if my accent isn't getting in the way so much uh, can you please tell me in the comment section I'd really appreciate the comeback I know I've changed my accent three times it's horrible I don't know I, I get so many things but this is the speed I'm most comfortable at I don't know if you heard that during the guide I was really chill during it and it was really simple to do uh, more than my other, you know, more slow paced uh, talk. Anyway, I'm wasting your time, guys. Have an absolutely great day, and best of luck in the rift. Thanks for watching.